What is going on everybody and welcome back to the East Carolina Pirates Dynasty on College Football Revamped. Today we are playing our first games against Florida Atlantic University along with Coastal Carolina. If for some reason you haven't yet seen the first episode, I definitely recommend hopping on that train because there was a lot of information thrown your way. As for Florida Atlantic, this may be the most winnable game on their schedule as we look to contain Nikozi Perry, who's a mobile quarterback. He also shares this offense with running back Johnny Four, who stands at 5'5", 175, but you better believe that he expectedly has the speed to go along with that. Adding to the talented group of skill position players, cornerback Zion Gilbert is extremely athletic with 95 speed, 93 acceleration. We don't really have a receiver who can match up with him. On paper, what our team does best is run the football using the powerful offensive line, and we're going to look to do plenty of that today. However, just a few housekeeping things before we begin. We had over 150 recruiting submissions last week, and that was awesome. I did say that I was going to reveal them today, so a man of my word. You won't get to see the board just yet as we are reviewing that for the recruiting episode coming in just a couple of weeks, but if you click the spreadsheet link in the description below. You can see all 12 submissions. And just remember, if you didn't get in this year, there is always next season. It was a very competitive process and I'm very thankful for everyone who did submit. And speaking of thankful, thank you so much for the support on that first episode. That was crazy. It blew away the expectations that I had for the series. And I'm very excited to be producing it for all of you. However, this does take a lot of time out of my busy schedule. So if you are enjoying the video, please drop a like and subscribe. I'm really hoping that we can hit once again, 100 likes on this episode. But that being said, I think that that is enough random content. Let's get into game action as we are at FAU Stadium in Boca Raton, Florida. It is worth mentioning that we do not have a home game until week three against FIU. So the goal is really to just survive this first road stretch. And who knows, maybe pull out a win or two today, although it would take quite a bit as we elect to defer to the second half. Drop your game predictions down in the comments section below. Luca De Jesus, right leg steps into it and boom, the season is underway. It's Lejante Wester back to return for the Owls. He takes it from the goal line out to the 20, to the 25, the 30, cuts right to the 35, and he will be dropped there. And that brings out the Owls offense led by Nikozi Perry. He takes a snap, quick screen right side to TJ Chase, and he's going nowhere. Alex Isaacson makes the tackle. It's third down and eight from the shotgun. Four to his left, snap, draw to Ford, and he's able to move forward, stiff arms a man, and moves the chains on what was a very unexpected play call, keeping this ECU defense on the field. Pirates show blitz on second and 10. Perry takes a snap, flustered out to his left side. In pursuit, and he breaks Miller's ankles in open field. More slippery than a bar of soap. He gains 20 yards and another first down. And how can you stop him when Marshawn Miller gets swerved like that? Moving forward, it's first down and 10 with just about five minutes to go in the first quarter from the pistol to give to Ford. He breaks through a tackler and he's able to pick up about eight yards. And this two-headed monster ground game is as advertised so far from the offset shotgun. Play action, parry all day to throw to the end zone and it's intercepted. Picked off, it's Alex Isaacson. He's racing down the sideline the other way and send him a postcard. McCammon in pursuit, but he is no DK Metcalf, and Alex Isaacson takes this the distance. Are you kidding me? A 100-yard pick six is how the Pirates open their season, and even Isaacson himself didn't see that coming. We are halfway through the first quarter of action, yet to see the Pirates' offense as Perry races left on the speed option, stiff arms a man, and is able to turn that into a gain of six due to poor tackling. Make it second down and four from the pistol formation. Read option to the left side. Perry keeps it himself, puts his head down, and he has six more. The interception really shot them in the foot, but they're running the football well and will continue to do so as Johnny Ford slips away from a tackler and gains a first down before Abdul Hudden laid the wood. Two plays later, third down and 10, clock stop, 302 inside, draw four. They try it again, and this time the Pirates not fooled. Marshawn Miller Jr., a little redemption. As they force the punt, Cooper Juxley finally on the field. He hands it off on a sweep to the right side. Leaf Pringle will call his name a lot today. A gain of eight yards and a first. Juxley from the pistol, two tight ends in the game. Read option right side, he keeps it himself. Beats a defender to the corner and has a first down for the Pirates. A gain of 11 and look at that mascot dance. Second down and 13, Juxley drops back to throw for the first time, puts it up in the air, and it's intercepted. Zion Gilbert takes it away, armed robbery on a throw that was supposed to be a bullet, but maybe Cooper Juxley, a.k.a. myself, is just shaking off the rust a little bit. The Owls have great field position following the terrible read. 
Perry in the pistol on third down, gives to Ford and Marshawn Miller in the backfield, slams the door on him, and he's been making big plays ever since getting shaken out of his shoes on that first possession. They bring out the field goal team and get on the board as the first quarter ends. So we hold them to three points off the turnover as Taj Berry stands back to return the kick at the two. He takes it out to the 10, the 20, cuts back to the 20, all the way to the left side of the field. He might have something here. He hugs the sideline, makes a man miss, one to beat, and he is gone like a girl in a country song. 98 yards for the touchdown as he silences this crowd and the first two touchdowns of the season are an interception, returned 100 yards, and this 98 yard kickoff return. A truly bizarre turn of events in Bender Rover's first game, Coach, but it will not go without more drama. John Mitchell behind the defense. See you later. He made his own reservations for six. FAU down just four following the point after us. This is an exploitation of strong safety Abdul Hudden in too deep coverage. Trust me, it will not work for them. It is once again a four-point game as ECU gets the football back. The handoff Lee Pringle makes a move, and he picks up a first down, a gain of 14. Moving forward down the field outside zone, stretch to the left side, and Wheaties is met immediately for a loss of three. That will really kill your momentum as Juxley sets up the screen left side. Titus Tilly makes the catch. Plenty of green in front of him, and he's able to pick up the first down and more. One of those nifty play designs from Coach Rover. Get the ball in your best playmaker's hand and let him get the yardage needed. Once again, the Pirates set up with third down and 10. Cooper Juxley against the blitz, throws the outside, and Barry makes the catch for 13, coming up with his second clutch play of the game. About two minutes to go, second down and goal. Juxley gives off Wheaties, and he's been in the backfield. And Terrius Moultrie made that a very short play as that's third down and goal. Two by two from the gun, Juxley snaps, rolls right high throw, Barry can't hold on through the contact. Fourth down and goal as he had it in his hands, but it was a high throw perhaps from Juxley, and Barry is not a possession receiver. Luca De Jesus makes this one a seven point game, however, so not all is lost. Finally breaking that stretch of four point leads for ECU. Nikozi Perry in the offense likely gets one more chance as he rolls right and Winston Rasmussen, the strong safety, meets him in the backfield for the first sack of the season for the Pirates. Third and seven, 42 to go. Perry rolls right into a big time sack. No pause. Domino McStuffles gets the Pirates the ball back with 30 seconds to go. Split backfield. Juxley from the gun against the blitz. Throws downfield. Tilly is wide open like a Burger King drive through and he makes the catch for 22. Seven seconds left. They might have one more chance. Juxley drops back against a four-man rush. Throws. Ziggy Savage is there. He makes the catch inside the 10 and all the way out to the six. And with one second left, they just send out Luca De Jesus and make it a 10-point game going into the half thanks to a series of big time plays for the defense and it took some unorthodox shenanigans as they got an interception a kickoff return for a touchdown and some pretty weird results but hey that's just how Bender Rover likes to see it the Pirates start out with the football in the second half trying to keep this momentum going Garcia hands off to Leaf Pringle and he weaves between the gap but wait a second why is Garcia in the game on that third down. Well, Cooper Juxley, some back spasms. He'll be okay, it's all precautionary. As from the pistol, Garcia keeps it himself and is spun down a loss of two. Khalif Price in the backfield to make it third down and long for Juxley who's back in the game. He takes a snap, two by two, quick throw, Titus Tilly. He makes the catch and continues the third down success for ECU. Now they need some fourth down success. Juxley gives it off to Pringle who weaves between a defender and kind of glitches his way for a seven 17 yard rush for a first down on just fourth down and one. A little bit of style points for that. Third down and 10, Juxley rolls, stops, fires, and it is caught. Pedro Bird, aka Big Bird, makes the catch. It's first down and goal. They waste no time. Give it off to Leaf Pringle. Two yard touchdown. He says, let's eat, my friends, as ECU takes a commanding 17 point lead. It's fun to watch. Nikozi Perry has to lead a comeback. Draw to Johnny Ford. He breaks through to the second level of the defense and has a 13-yard first down. Under six to go in the game as Perry and the offense try to get on the board. Takes a snap, flustered, quick lob over the top, and Wester makes the catch down inside the one. Once again, Abdul Hudden exposed, this time in a mid zone, but it brings up first down and goal to go. Perry give Ford touchdown, FAU Owls, but they still trail by 10. They need a big time stop. 
Third down and 10 for Juxley. Takes the snap. Three-man rush in his face. Throws to the outside. Dotson makes the catch, but he steps out of bounds. And they'll have to punt the football away to Perry, who gives it off to Ford. He gashes through the middle of the defense and stiff arms his way all the way down to the 34-yard line. A couple plays later, second and six. Ford, right side give. He's able to win the corner, and he picks up another first down, wearing down the Pirates' defense. Third down and 10, three minutes left in the ball game. Perry outside throw, Wester makes the catch on the sideline and he's drug out of bounds inside the 10. So another first and goal to go for FAU. Snap inside, give Ford. He's able to gash back inside and he picks up six yards and a touchdown for the Owls. Three point game, they need a stop. Third down and nine, 127. Juxley from single back, takes the snap, pressure comes and he throws incomplete. So the Owls are going to get a chance once down 17 to win this football game. From the pistol, first down, 118 to go. Perry takes a snap, pocket collapses. He throws and Robinson makes the catch on the out route, 11 yards. They need to hurry. 70 seconds left in the game. First and 10. Perry from the pistol takes the snap. Four man rush. Throws again and it's intercepted. That's ball game. Alex Isaacson for the second time today. How fitting that the man that got the first points and the first interception of the Pirates season is the one who seals the game. And all they have to do is kneel the football. Cooper Juxley, victory formation, lets that clock wind down, puts that knee into the turf, and this one is over, folks. 27 to 24 in the upset win over Florida Atlantic University. It got close at the end, but what a game that was. Perhaps the final score did not reflect how dominant East Carolina was in this game as they just found ways to score from the interception return for a touchdown to the Taj Berry kick return. That got them out to a 14-0 lead and from there, up until that last minute or so, it didn't feel like Florida Atlantic had much of a chance at all to win that game. The defense is still a little shaky. We saw some mishaps in coverage, specifically from Abdul Hutton, but I thought they did a very nice job of containing a two-headed monster in Nikozi Perry and Johnny Ford. Juxley missed some throws today. The other interception was really just an arm punt as well. Leaf Pringle really carried the offense on the ground today with a touchdown. Titus Tilly kept finding ways to get involved and get open, and the receiving game the rest of the way was pretty evenly distributed, so I really can't complain there. Abdul Hutton led the team in tackles today, but was a liability in coverage, while Winston Rasmussen and Domino McStuffles each had a sack, and of course, Alex Isaacson with the two picks. Luca De Jesus made both of his field goals. As you remember, we re Revamped the Big 12 Conference, but the early results were pretty mixed. TCU dominates FCS Southeast, while Texas Tech falls to FCS Southeast. The biggest surprise, however, is that USF managed to knock off once-ranked top 10 Cincinnati 16-13 in overtime. We open conference play with Baylor next episode, and they're 2-0 to start off. But hold your horses, we have one more game. Taking a look at the Coastal Carolina roster, they are a deep team, they are a fast team, and their talent starts with redshirt sophomore quarterback Grayson McCall and he may be one of the best quarterbacks we will see all year as the Chanticleers are an infinitely better team than we are but they are coming off of a loss in their first game of the season and if you've seen any college football revamped videos you know that Coastal Carolina has a teal field that is exactly what we are going to highlight as there's really no question Brooks Field one of the coolest in the entire country but let's get into it McCall starts out with the football play action bootleg to the right side Stops for a second, decides to take off, breaks a tackle, slips another, and he is going to show why he is so dangerous on the very first play of the game with a 15-yard rush, harm with the stiff arm, broken tackle, carrying his team early and often. Third down and seven. McCall steps back, feels the rush, and goes down. It is Bart Bigsby, the drive killer. Both defensive tackles have a sack so far. Juxley with the football wing offset shotgun gives off Pringle, runs into his lineman, bounces off of him, and is able to spring himself forward for eight yards off of a disastrous play. Going right back his way, Pringle puts his head down, and he gains seven that time on the carry. A shotgun on third down and three. Juxley takes a snap, quick throw outside, and he misses his target. Titus Tilly was open. Juxley just cannot connect with them, and they'll have to give it right back to Coastal. 0-0 ball game. McCall gives inside to White. He sheds a tackle and falls forward for a first down. Split backfield this time from the gun. McCall, read option. Wants to keep it himself. Stiff arms Isaacson and he scampers into open field inside the 35 into pirate territory on a 27 yard keeper. 
Bender Rover and his staff are going to have a headache stopping him today. Second down and three. They split it out. Empty backfield three by two. McCall all the time to throw. Fires to Healy. He spins off a tackler. Slips another. And he's down inside the five. First and goal. McCall. Easy touchdown. He caps off the drive himself. Finishing what he started. The Shannon clears out to an early 7-0 lead. This is a different ball game. The Pirates offense cannot afford to stall. They kick off deep to Barry who stands about two yards deep in his own end zone. Takes it out 15, 20 around the edge. Plenty of space, 30, 40, 45, and he's shoved out of bounds around the 47, but Juxley in the offense having some trouble making the most out of this. Third down and eight. Takes the snap, quick throw left side, and it's offline like your grandma's Wi-Fi. Bush on the deflection, and they have to punt it right back to the Shannon clears. McCall, play action on first down, throws flat and it's intercepted. Abdul Hudden takes it to the 40 and all the way down to the 37. The opportunist, burnt twice in the last game and he comes through with a big time play. It's up to the offense to score off the turnover. Juxley play action looking and he goes down, the ball comes out. Are you kidding me? So Abdul Hudden does something good, and of course, the unblocked defender wallops Juxley from the backside. Whew, phrasing. Turnovers on two straight drives from the shotgun. McCall takes the snap, sets up screen right side. ECU has Bigsby out there, but he's too slow. And Jones gains a first down, shoved out of bounds around the 40-yard line. So 19 yards for the first down. They're moving the ball pretty well. A second and one. Jones in motion. McCall play action. Throws over the middle. Healy makes the catch. Hudden lays the boom, but it does not matter. 10 yards and a first down. Fast forward, third and inches. McCall gives it to White inside the one touchdown. That was easy, and they go up two scores just like that with five to go in the first half. Last game, the Pirates led the Owls 14-0 in the first half. This time, they trail 14-0 as Taj Berry. He wants to take this out six yards deep in his own end zone. He makes a move to the right side of the 30, 35-40, beats a defender. One more to beat until he's off to the races, and nothing but Teal in front of him. Two games, two kickoff return touchdowns, and Scary Barry puts the team on his back again. 106 yards, and he looked like a motorcycle weaving his way through that traffic. ECU is on the board. Coastal Carolina takes over up seven. McCall split backfield, runs the triple option, flips right. Reese White, first down and more, a gain of 16 on the carry. They hurry up, first down and 10. A screen out to Brown, and this time he's met in the backfield. Luigi Vozelli on the stop as it's third down and 14 with 314 to go fittingly. McCall takes a snap, pressure comes off his back foot, completes the likely, but he's not even close. Abdul Hudden made the stop. They punt it back to ECU with 32 seconds left from the eye. Juxley rolls right, stops, completes underneath the Pringle, and he takes a big shot. ECU uses their last timeout. They have to hurry. 25 ticks, third and two. Juxley throws over the middle. It's caught Dotson. He makes a move, breaks a tackle, and extends out to the 30. Trying to get in field goal range at least. Juxley takes a snap. Pressure comes and he goes down. That's not what you can afford. Do they have enough time to spike the football? It's going to be close. Down to one second and he has milliseconds. So one more play out of field goal range. That was the worst case scenario. All the Pirates can do is heave one deep to the end zone. Juxley throws it as far as he can, which is not very far, but it's a big missed opportunity for East Carolina as they trail seven at the half. East Carolina got dominated in the first half, and just because of Taj Berry, it's a one-possession game. It could be a lot worse at this point. ECU needs to pin their ears back, Stop Grayson McCall. But first, the offense needs to score. From the shotgun, Pringle to his left play action. Juxley over the middle. He completes to Wilbert Hernandez, who trucks a man and is hit at the 50-yard line. His first catch of the year as they go ace pistol. Juxley read option right side. Keeps it, gets a huge block from Titus Tilly and stretches for that first down, breaking tackles along the way. Continuing to stick to the ground game, wing offset shotgun, they give inside to Pringle fittingly yet again, who makes a move on the safety and is hit awkwardly for a first down nonetheless. Running the ball has set them up in a position to tie the game. Juxley against the blitz, throws to Marcus Dotson up the seam, and ECU manages to tie this football game up on a very clutch play. But the second part of the game plan stopped Grayson McCall and so far so good. A loss of three, it's Gunnar Schaefer. Second down from the gun, McCall gives inside to White, and Reese White is wrapped up. It's Boomer Brooks. Third down and 15. They have a chance to get the stop. McCall against the three-man rush, throws over the middle, and Latushko makes the catch for 22, and a first down. 
Two plays later, another third down situation. McCall, pump fakes the screen. Now he goes to the screen. Latushko again. A swarm of white and yellow wrap him up, and he did not get the first down. And they choose to attempt a 46-yard field goal on fourth down and one. That splits the uprights, and the Chanticleers retake the lead late in the third as Juxley in the offense with the ball back from the shotgun. Play action. Juxley looks downfield in between the safeties, and what a dot to Titus Tilley for 31. He was the leading receiver last game, and he's back with vengeance. From the single back, Juxley takes a snap, drops back to pass, quick throw out route. Wilbert Hernandez makes the catch across the 25 and down inside the 20. Another big gain of 21. He's got 40 yards on the day. The Pirates face third and seven. Bunch to the right side. Juxley quick throw and Big Bird cannot hang on. A little contact. But look at this replay. Juxley's pass missed so badly that it went to the wrong person. Big missed opportunity and they have to settle with the tie from Luca De Jesus who remains perfect on the season. Grab your popcorn, folks. Fourth quarter action. Latushko in motion from left to right. They give it off to him on the reverse and he gains 13, dragging Iggy Potts with him. And no matter who they give it to, we cannot stop the Shannon Clear his run game. Second and seven, 621. McCall drops back to pass. Steps up to run and he goes down. Domino McStuffles flips over him and absolutely no finesse at all. He won with a pure bull rush. It's third down and long and McCall and the offense are faced with one of the biggest plays of the game as they try to take the lead. A 53-yard field goal up on the way, and it hooks to the left side. No good. Stay tied, baby. Juxley and the offense get their first chance to take the lead of the game. Single back, two tight ends. Juxley takes a snap. Quick throw on the curl route to Savage, and that was timed beautifully as he makes a 17-yard reception for a first. 4.50 and ticking. Juxley from the gun play action. Takes a snap, has time, throws downfield, wide open Tilly! He hauls it in, and it's another first down inside the 30. That play fake sucked in the defenders just enough to complete that one downfield, and Tilly has been excellent in this episode. Single back set yet again. Juxley takes a snap, first down, throws to the corner, and Dotson! Did he get a foot down? He did! This is a beautiful throw from Cooper Juxley, and better footwork than a podiatrist on the sideline for Demarcus Dotson. They are a few yards away from their first lead of the game. Juxley snap inside, give Wheaties, puts his head down, and they have done it. Four minutes to go, 24-17. The comeback is unreal. Once down 14, can they hold off Grayson McCall for three minutes? Takes a snap, four-man rush comes. He evades to the right side and goes down. It's the true freshman, Tajik Bush, and the first sack of his career could not come at a better time as he gives his team a chance to run out this clock go 2-0 and pull off a remarkable upset, but they have to convert on third and eight. Juxley from the bunch takes a snap, rolls to his right side, looking for somewhere to go, throws downfield, and Tilly cannot hang on. It went off of his hands. That would have been the dagger. Juxley rolled, put the pass on the money, and they have to trust their defense one more time. Ragsdale the punt, he's trying to pin them back to at least make this difficult. Angles to the right side and bounces out of bounds at the four. So a 96 yard field for them to work with. Now or never for McCall in the offense. Under two to go. Lobs to Brown and he makes the catch as they continue to try to avoid being upset by one of the worst teams in college football on paper. First and 10. McCall takes a snap, pressure comes and he goes down. It is Domino McStuffles, yet again, his third sack of the year. It's third and 16, McCall over the middle to Healy and he's wrapped up and dropped. It brings up fourth down and seven, this is for the ball game. Wing offset gun, Reese White to the right side. McCall needs to work his magic, sends bed good from right to left into the backfield. Takes a snap, McCall sets up screen right side, it's not there and he goes down! It's over! But wait a second, there is a flag off sides and they get one more chance. It is fourth down and 2.58 to go, McCall quick throw and Healy beat Decker. He's inside the 40 and down to the 35. The Pirates are finding any way to let ECU rob this game away from them. Split backfield, McCall from the gun, takes a snap, steps up to run, runs into Schaefer and is spun down. Second and 15, they have to hurry it up. 36 ticks to go. Third and 15, McCall has time to throw. Looks to the right side and Brown makes the tippy toe catch. It's fourth down and one though, they need a yard. McCall from the pistol against the stack box. 
31 to go. McCall snaps. Read option left side. And he's flipped over. It's a swarm of white and yellow. And ECU has won the football game. The upset of the century. Michigan App State. Baylor Liberty. And this one is right up there with the best of them. Their run game had been so good all game long. When they came out on fourth down, it felt like a gimme, but we stacked the box, and one of McCall's only mistakes turns out to be absolutely fatal. 24-17 East Carolina, and we are 2-0. It's time to address the elephant in the room. Yes, this was a fluke. Yes, we are playing on Heisman Jake hit sliders, but you have to remember that all of these games were just a Taj Berry kick return away from probably being lost. I really just don't know what to say. I was not expecting this, especially in the first episode with a team I advertised as so terrible, starting out 2-0 was definitely the last thing on my mind. I will be making a couple of changes to the way we play this dynasty. Mainly the fatigue will be turned off because I find that the CPU gets really, really dumb if you leave it on for some reason. They just get gassed and call terrible plays. You saw Grayson McCall running into his lineman at the end of the game. I guess upsets do happen. Players do have off games, but I don't want it to be because of a flaw in the game's coding per se. Additionally, I will not be using more than one player on defense. I will not be switching to anyone. That's just because I like to see the ratings play out the way that they are meant to play out. That's just a personal preference though. I did miss quite a few tackles in that game. So honestly, I don't know how much it would make a difference anyways, but you know how it goes. If FAU is not the most winnable game on our schedule, it is undoubtedly FIU. They are not great at all, but do have some players that we need to watch out for. Notably, running back Devontae Price with that 84 speed, 95 agility, and acceleration. He is a power back though, so we'll need to watch out for that. He's very good. Max Bordenschlag is their quarterback. No clue if I said that right, but he's kind of a statue with 66 speed. He can move around a little bit but he's by no means Grayson McCall. We are continuing the trend of playing a weaker team with the first game and a stronger team in the second. That was unplanned, but Baylor is stacked. They are very, very good. They do have a bit of a question mark at quarterback, but Gary Bohannon has a strong arm and he's pretty mobile as well. Not looking forward to it. The top 25 after three weeks is pretty normal as Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, and Oklahoma do make up the top five. Of course, Oklahoma now in the SEC. They did beat Bama in their first game of the season, perhaps starting the passing of the torch a little bit earlier than many expected. But the Big 12, we see a big time upset. FCS Southeast beat Oklahoma State. Also, Kansas is undefeated, so a very weird simulation playing out early on in the series as Kansas, Kansas State, and East Carolina are all tied at the top of the Big 12 North, and I'm sure that that was a phrase that no one expected to hear. Remember that a simple click of the like button goes a long way to helping out the channel and allows me to bring you more high-quality content. If you're new, remember to subscribe and leave your feedback on the series down in the comment section below. I hope that you enjoyed the first games of our East Carolina Pirates dynasty on College Football Revamped. My name is Jack. I'll see you next time.